What's up? I'm TJ. I'm definitely not Tyler. Tyler's made a lot of changes lately, if you haven't noticed. And I can definitely speak to that considering how I'm the person who films him and observes his behavior more than anybody in the world. One of the biggest changes Tyler's made in his life is in adding an actual morning routine to his day, and specifically, a morning routine involving meditation. The fact that I am on vacation, I'm out here in the Isle of Palms, the Wild Dunes here in South Carolina, but still got up, still did my 10 minute meditation, still did my 10 minutes of gratitude journaling, and still got out here and ran five miles. It took me like 56 minutes, but took that time for me took that time to start my day intentionally, which will set the course of the rest of my day, and be able to just be all in with my wife and daughter as we hang out at the beach, hang out at the pool, and do all that fun vacation stuff. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. See, the science is already out there. Meditation works. It lowers your stress levels, it lowers depression, it lowers anxiety levels. It increases compassion. People who meditate are less likely to get divorced. People who meditate are likely to make more money. Overall, if I took you and I cloned you and I had you do everything exactly the same in your day, but the one difference that you made is that you added meditation, you would see at least a 10% boost in every single other area of your life. And so, what I'd like to talk to you about is how you can get started with your meditation and some of the frequently asked questions you might have. Now you might ask me, TJ, talk so much about meditation, who are you to talk about it? I'm someone who's meditated for over 15,000 minutes meditated with four different masters. Brad Warner, Peter Ralston, Ken Wilber, and Doshin Roshi. And I'm also someone who studied the actual neuroscience of meditation, so continue listening. The first question that comes up, just the first, first, first thing that comes up is this issue of time. And that's what happened with Tyler, and that's what happens with most people. Look, there are 1,440 minutes in a day. If you can't take 10 of those minutes, which adds up to less than 1% of your day, if you can't take that to meditate, then you should be meditating twice as long. <laughs> and I mean that. Imagine if we lived in a world where people bragged about being too busy to brush their teeth, too busy to shower, too busy to wipe their butt. Now imagine if instead of just smelling bad because you didn't do those things, imagine if you now brought that into all of your relationships and all of your work. Imagine if because you didn't brush your teeth, you were spewing horrible things to your partner. Imagine that because you didn't take a shower, you weren't able to focus on your work. And imagine if because you didn't wipe your butt, you couldn't go out and enjoy many of the small things in life. That is what it is like to not meditate. The first thing involved in getting started with your meditation practice is that you're going to make the time. And the way we're going to make the time is we're going to dedicate the exact same slot of time every single day for a meditation and we're not going to question it. Okay, so you can say that meditation begins the night before you meditate. When you set an alarm on your phone 20 minutes earlier, 30 minutes earlier, to make sure that you have that time for your meditation. 
And now I don't want to hear any excuses about how you have to sleep in or something like that. That's not, that's not okay. You can set it 20 to 30 minutes earlier than you're usually setting it. You'll be able to survive for that. Now, it's the morning of, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to move everything off the side of our bed or just move away some of the pillows and we're going to take three pillows stacked up like this and we're going to sit on the pillows and we want nothing behind us. We want nothing touching our back because we want to be sitting in a position with our legs crossed where the only thing that's supporting us is our back muscles, a nice erect spine. We're doing this so that we don't fall asleep. In the book, Zen Mind, Beginner's Mind, they talk about people trying to attain enlightenment. <laughs> and what they discuss in the book is that enlightenment is actually when you find that nice spot between your hip bones and your spine where you can sit erect. And when you just hold that posture for the sake of holding that posture, not for trying to attain anything, not for the scientific benefits, not for the health benefits, not for the breathing techniques, but just you hold that posture, that's enlightenment. So we're gonna be sitting there, <sighs> spine straight, and that's gonna activate certain neurochemicals in our brain, like serotonin, okay? Neurochemicals that flow into us when we are in a positive state, when we're in a confident state. So what we're doing is for 10 minutes every morning, we're starting off with a very confident state of mind. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our hands, and we're gonna place one hand over the other hand, and we're gonna put our thumbs slightly together. And the reason we're gonna do that is because our thumbs are gonna tell us where our mindset is. If our thumbs are pressing in really hard, that means that we are being way too tense and we need to relax. And if our thumbs are no longer touching, it's because we're falling asleep. So we sit there in this position with our thumbs touching, just paying attention to our body, paying attention to the surroundings, but not overdoing it, just sitting there. And we're gonna do absolutely nothing. Some people talk about breath meditations and calm your mind and clear your mind. Forget all of that. We're gonna sit there and the number one focus when you're getting started with meditation is to just not move that much. Don't move to scratch, hold that itch, notice the itch as much as you possibly can. Notice if you're gonna sneeze. Notice your reaction, notice the leg pain, notice everything. Just sit there. We're gonna do that for a while. And what's gonna happen is that our mind is gonna start racing and we're gonna have a million, jillion, trillion thoughts happen. And what you can do at this moment is you can take advantage of it. And you can take one question, any question you'd like, and you're gonna think about that one question. And you're gonna challenge yourself to only focus on that question for the 10 minutes. And that's it. What's going on here is that we're taking advantage of our subconscious mental processes. So I want you to imagine that what you think of as you, what you think of as the thinking part of you is only 1% of your mind. And that in truth, there's another 99% of your mind that is infinitely complex and that's infinitely powerful and that can figure out the answers to any question you want, any question you want, as long as you remain focused on that question. And so that's what we're going to do in our meditation practice. So for example, I might ask myself, what is love? And I will sit there and I will think. 
and I'll kind of drift off and think about me sitting there, but I'll go back, oh wait, thinking about what love is, what does love mean? And I keep going back to that question, and I th keep going deeper and deeper, and I ask how, and I ask why, and I keep going deeper, and I keep questioning every single thing that pops up in my head, I keep questioning it, and when I recognize that the only reason that I am saying is the answer to something is because someone else told me it, I'm questioning even deeper. And when you do this, eventually you will hit upon a piece of truth that's so fantastic that it will change your day. And so you're going to be doing this for 10 minutes, 20 minutes a day, every single day. Over time, you're going to develop core principles. You're going to develop deep, deep understandings of the world around you that are far deeper than anything anybody around you has. And what this is going to do is it's going to make you a more powerful person in your life because you won't have to pay attention to the news or pay attention to gossip or pay attention to media. Instead, you pay attention to your own direct experiences because you've hit upon these principles on your own. What does that look like? Look at Tyler's change. We recently put out a video called King Eats First. And in that episode, Tyler thought about legacy and what legacy meant. And he kept thinking about what he was doing. He said, oh, I'm putting out these videos so my daughter can see them. I'm putting out these videos so my daughter can see my legacy. I'm putting out these videos for my daughter. Everything's for my daughter. Oh, wait a minute. Why am I putting out videos for my daughter when I could just be there for her? What kind of legacy am I putting out there if she has to watch videos in order to understand who I am and not just have direct experience with her father? You see that? How he kept pushing forward through his line of reasoning and questioning, right? And then he finally hit upon a core principle and that changed the rest of his behaviors. That, that right there, that's what we're doing with our meditations. And so I challenge you to do the following. You're going to go to the app store on Android or iPhone, and you're going to download Headspace. It's my favorite app for meditation. You're going to download Headspace, and you're going to do the free 10-day exercise that they have there. You're going to just meditate for 10 minutes every single day, and you're going to observe the changes in your behavior. And then you're going to come back to this video, and you're right in the comments what's happened for you. So, in review, one, I'm sitting here because Tyler's made big changes in his life and one of the reasons he's made big changes in his life is because he's figured out what's important and he's changed his morning routine by adding in meditation every single morning to slow him down and figure out what's important in his life. Two, meditation works. It works so much that it's, it's even more important than brushing your teeth and wiping your butt. We're gonna start our meditation routine by setting an alarm 20 to 30 minutes earlier than we're used to waking. And five, we're gonna wake up, take three pillows, sit them in the middle of the floor or on a bed without a back so that we have to sit there with our spine straight. And we're gonna put our hands one on top of the other, thumbs touching, and we're gonna do absolutely nothing while we think about the important questions of life. We take that time to figure out what's important to us so then we can take the important actions. And that's it. That's everything you need to know about meditation. I'm TJ, and Tyler will see you next time. This is The Daily Bread. Bread.